Thank you so much. It's, uh, it's so great to be here. It's my first time ever addressing a cartographic crowd. It's also great to be here in the great state of Washington. I have not been many places where I could uh, count 23 ridge lines in one photo. And uh, this is a photo I took on Monday on a, on a hike, and I'm still in a state of happy recovery from the sensory overload that I, that I experienced on it. Anyway, um, what, I'm going to talk to about, uh, what I'm going to talk about today is visual hierarchies and interactive web-based uh, 3D mapping. And uh, first of all, what I mean by web-based 3D mapping. Uh, basically, it's a technique of uh, visualizing our surface in interactive 3D uh, web applications. That technique is fairly recent. It's been driven by 3D computer graphics, by yeah, TCPIP, uh, that is by the suite of, uh, of protocols that which basically power the internet, and most importantly and recently by, uh, by WebGL, uh, which is a library that's made uh, uh, computer graphics vastly available in, in, in web browsers. It has become, it has proliferated since Google adopted it in, in Maps in 2012. It's been a fairly silent change, but in 2012 Google carried out a complete overhaul of, of, of its uh, uh, mapping technology. So it's now based on, 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 on 3D mapping technology. And uh, luckily, at least two modern free and open source 3D mapping software stacks exist. And I will get back to one of those later in this, in this talk. Um, now, the real topic of this talk is this question. Is uh, web-based 3D mapping cartography? And while you ponder this question, I'd like to I'd like to show you two images. Uh, chances are the first one might be familiar to you. This is possibly one of the most beautiful shaded relief uh, uh, maps ever created. It's been created by the National Geographic Society. It came out in the November 1988 supplement of National Geographic. It was also one of the first uh, works of cartography I have seen in my life uh, when I was 14 years old, and my dad smuggled the copy of the National Geographic magazine behind the Iron Curtain. It was a difficult thing to do at the time. And um, basically what strikes you about it is that it's, it's information value. It's, chances are that you, uh, same as me, have never been to the summit area of Mount Everest. But just looking at this image, you get a pretty good idea of the physical landforms that you might be that you might be seeing there. Now, fast forward 31 years, amazing technology progress, and this is the state-of-the-art 3D map we're getting at the moment. Now, who am I to criticize Google, right? <laughs> um, but still, when you look at this map with your cartographic eyeballs, well, chances are they will hurt. <laughs> the, uh, the questions are brutal and obvious. What is the purpose of this? What is the, who is the intended audience? And what is this map supposed to convey? And so how, how come, how can it be that after 31 years of tremendous technological advance, we're ending up with a vastly inferior product than the one you've seen before. And my take on this is that this is a classical example of the technology versus craft conflict. Uh, because whenever a new technology makes a formal specialist graph accessible to a wider group, there's a massive drop in overall product quality. And that's something that you'll be experiencing everywhere. But in this particular case, 3D mapping is the technology, and cartography is the craft. So what does this mean? Does this mean that web-based 3D mapping technology is actually all bad? Well, it isn't. Well, it doesn't. The, it's given us so many new possibilities, such as arbitrary viewing angles, interactivity, and multi-resolution mapping. But the problem is that in a classic case of technology versus craft, these are mistaken for map design, which they are not. And as a result, you get lots of these misconceptions. For a cartographer, a map is a representation of an area or a depiction emphasizing relationship between elements of space. For a 3D mapping technologies, a map is orthophotos draped over the EMs. 
For a cartographer, a map works with hierarchy of features. For a 3D mapping technologies, a map aims for data visualization or simply for an impression. For a cartographer, a map relies on cartographic principles which have evolved in thousands of years, while for a 3D mapping technologist, a map relies on applied computer graphics which have evolved in 50 years. Additionally, there is lots of mess in 3D mapping technology. One of them is that 3D maps are by definition superior to plain old 2D maps. That might sound like funny to you, but I can assure you that in my field, computer graphics, there is lots of people that think exactly this. In reality, 2D or 3D is a map design decision which is subject to map's purpose and audience. And 3D does not fit, in fact, all or even most map purposes. Another myth, 3D maps are a new field which only computer graphics and WebGL made possible. In reality, 3D maps are much part of the cartographic lineage and the prevailing purposes are cities and high terrain landscapes. So all these work together to produce this. There's got to be a better approach, and for the better approach, I'm borrowing this quote from a completely different field. It really is not a question of technology replacing craft, but the age old craft taking on the technology of today. I made lots of work hammering this point into the 3D mapping technologists. But for you cartographic people, it's more seeing the possibility of 3D mapping technology is going to produce some amazing maps. Um, so applying this better, better approach, we can arrive in something I call the principles of 3D map design. First of all, we define the purpose and audience of the map. Second, we check that the vertical element is essential to the purpose. That's very important. If, that's, if, if that condition is not fulfilled, you might be better off doing 2D mapping instead of 3D mapping. And third, we design a visual hierarchy which is consistent with the purpose. The rest of the stock is a case study in application of these principles, a global 3D mountain map. Um, the, in, uh, the inspiration I take for this are these pictorial information boards that you can find in observation platforms around the world, shown here in the mountains of Switzerland or here in the Appalachian mountains of New Hampshire. Um, the purpose of our map is to provide an accurate descriptive portrait of Earth's surface, conveying an accurate sense of mountain landforms, and respecting the relative importance in lettering and visual style. The audience is mountaineers, outdoor enthusiasts such as myself, hikers, backcountry skiers, or simply anybody who wants to learn about physical geography of the Earth. Now, instead of being overly technical in the remaining few minutes of this talk, I have set up this website where you can find the live version of the map, all the source code and configuration, plus a good deal of documentation so you can go through the entire process yourself if you decide to. The ingredients we're using is Ubuntu Linux server, VTS Geospatial, which is an open source 3D mapping software stack. It's one of the two uh, software stacks I was referring in the early part of my talk. Why we use VTS Geospatial? Well, there's good reason for that. That's a system I designed and co-authored. <laughs> but other than that, it's got other, let's say, more or less subjective advantages. It's fully open source software, including backend streaming servers. It's got built-in support for feature hierarchies and rendering. And it supports visual hierarchies through styling. And there's also off-the-shelf terrain imagery and OSM vector data available. Uh, in terms of data ingredients, uh, those are listed here. I won't go into the details. It will suffice to say that all of these data ingredients are free for non-commercial non -commercial use, so they suit our case study well. Uh, many of them are free completely. Uh, and in the remaining part of the talk, I will just go briefly through the steps to, uh, taken to produce the, the global 3D mountain map. The first step is that we create a base map uh, with the physical terrain and texture. Second, we add lettering for the ultra prominent mountains. Third, we add more lettering based on OpenStreetMap for the remaining mountains. Uh, fourth, we create an intellectual hierarchy which will make our lettering meaningful. And finally, fifth, we provide the visual hierarchy to improve fit ground and legibility of the map we are producing. Uh, once again, you can check out the website for all the details how this is done. Uh, so in the first step, these are two technical steps, actually, that 
involve running, ra running one command line utility and, uh, and editing a single JSON file. So it's for a simple thing to do. And what do we get based on this? I need to wait a while for the video to come up. We get this beautiful 3D globe, which uh, is going to give us pretty good sense of the physical landforms. Uh, it's also searchable, which is nice. Um, so yeah, it's, it represents the physical landforms fairly well, but it's just a base map. It doesn't really have an informational value of a map. This view overlooking Mount Rainier from the south in the direction of Puget Sound is important to us because we're going to use it as a reference uh, uh, as we build the map, as we go through the, step, as the steps of building it. In the second step, we add uh, the ultra prominent mountains. That basically involves downloading a single data set and editing three JSON files. And in the third step, we we, create, we added two more JSON files uh, to, add the, to add more lettering to the map. So after, I skipped step, step two in visualization because it doesn't, isn't not really that interesting, but after step three, uh, we get lettering in our map, which, is, which makes no sense at all. <laughs> it's very confusing. We just uh, put a bunch of labels there without any intellectual hierarchy whatsoever. We can notice that there is actually no no labels for the important places, but bad uh, and mountains, and lots of labels for rather obscure places. So uh, we move on to step four, intellectual hierarchy. Um, basically, we order mountains by topographic prominence, which is by far the, the best uh, automatic measure of, 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 of relative importance of the mountain. And we order settlements by population, and we make the system solve the occlusions by the rules of this, of this hierarchy. So this, once again, involves editing two JSON files. And after we do this, we do something that makes a of, lot more sense. Actually, we get the right labels at the moment uh, for, the, for, the, uh, for the major mountains and major cities. Uh, the overlaps are solved in a meaningful way. But still, the map is very difficult to read. So we need to do the final step, which is visual hierarchy. And what we do in the visual hierarchy through media styling is that uh, this probably doesn't seem very surprising. What, what I do here is that I use two different typefaces for, uh, for, for settlements and for mountains. I also divide both settlements and mountains into seven classes based on their relative importance and use different font sizes. And I also play with the transparency a bit to make the, uh, the, the, lesser, the, the, the less important uh, places and, and mountains recede more into the background and to improve the legibility of the, of the map. There's also one more trick that we do with this amazing uh, uh, GLSL one-liner, and that is that we, we put the relief shading into the image, and we provide a bit of whitewashing to improve figure ground. We combine these two by updating the style sheets and updating the storage view, and we get the final version of our map. So this is vastly improved now. Uh, now, the beauty of this of this is that the map is interactive. It's not a single view. So I just need to wait for a while for it. It takes, for some reason, it takes a while for the video to come up. But you can see that you can actually zoom out. You can turn it around. And as you do this, do this the map keeps relettering itself in a way which is consistent with the intellectual and visual hierarchy that, that we've designed. So this is what we've achieved here. I'll let you admire this for a few seconds. <laughs> yeah, so this low orbit view of the Pacific Northwest is where my talk comes to an end. You can find, once again, the live version of the map at the URL I've shown before, including all configuration files and source code. If you're interested in VTS Geospatial more, the system that's used to produce this map, you can check out the VTS Geospatial website. It's documentation written by Eastern Europeans, so bear with us. <laughs>
and uh, some, from time to time, uh, interesting information comes out, comes out on, on the on Malone Tech Twitter. Also, the GitHub repositories, including everything we do, is just page are interesting to check out as well.